Good evening, everyone, and welcome to part two of our Fox 10 You Decide election special. On tonight's program, we're going to preview the most important races facing voters this November, including the U.S. Senate race and the Arizona Attorney General's race. But we begin tonight with the biggest race in the state and one of the most watched in the entire country, the race for governor between former news anchor Carrie Lake and Secretary of State Katie Hobbs. We have team coverage of both candidates. Let's begin with Fox 10 Steve Nielsen following the Hobbs campaign. Katie Hobbs cruised through the primary with massive Democratic support. While serving as Secretary of State during the 2020 election, she gained national notoriety defending Arizona's election. I think it's unfortunate that with so many pressing issues to deal with that we still have folks who are relitigating the 2020 election. In our sit-down interview, she told us one of the issues she considers pressing is abortion rights. I think we're going to have to go to the ballot, and I think we need to protect this right in the Constitution, uh, and that's going to take a, a a vote of the people to do that. So what would be on the ballot? What would they be saying yes or no to? Uh, I don't want to talk in hypotheticals. Um, there's well, I, I mean, what's your opinion? What, we don't have to talk about hypothetical about what it's going to be, but what, what would you want it to look like? Uh, there are a lot of groups working on this right now, and I don't want to speak for them. I certainly will be involved and uh, help lead the charge, uh, but I don't. I can't talk specifics about language. I don't know. Well, I mean, you're, you're asking for people to vote for you mm -hmm. to lead the yeah. charge, to be the governor of the state. I feel like they should have a firm answer on what you the majority of Arizonans support safe legal abortion and I've been unequivocal that this is a decision that belongs between a patient and their doctor uh, the decision to have abortion does not need politicians in the middle of it so there should be no limits on this it should just uh, if there were to be a bill crafted it should say we're not having any role in abortion it's it's a, a decision between a patient and their doctor with no limits it's a decision between a patient and their doctor. Arizona has seen some of the worst inflation numbers in the country. Hobb says she has a plan for that. Our plan provides meaningful relief to families today or, or the day it's implemented uh, by providing tax cuts on everyday items like over-the-counter medication, school supplies, diapers, feminine hygiene products, things that people buy every day um, and that are hitting them uh, in the pocketbook. She also wants to expand child care assistance, tax credits for technical career training, and lower income taxes for hundreds of thousands. Along our southern border, she says she'll advocate for Arizona. Obviously the presence of the same party as you. Will you push back on this? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what does that look like? I mean, how, how, how will you address this when you're not getting the response you want from the federal government? Um, well, I don't think Governor Ducey has tried to get a, a response. He's just focused on political stunts, like shipping, busing people to Washington, D.C. and putting these shipping containers out. Those don't, don't solve any issues. They're just, you know, trying to aggra aggravate and uh, and I and you know I don't know that he's ever sat down and had the conversation hey President Biden these are the things we need for our state Hobbs has been criticized during the election cycle for refusing to debate Republican Carrie Lake do you regret that decision do you wish you had just debated her no I maintain my position that it is a much better opportunity to voters for voters to hear where I stand on the issues how I contrast with Carrie Lake so since we aren't going to hear these candidates debate Let's check in with Stephanie Bennett, who has more on her opponent, Carrie Lake. We've got big policy ideas that will help all Arizonans. A fiery newcomer to the political game, former Phoenix News anchor Carrie Lake is taking the state by storm. Former President Donald Trump endorsed her early on and has shared the stage for several rallies. I am ready to serve as your governor. Lake grew up in Iowa alongside her eight siblings. After a 27-year career in journalism, she entered the race for governor last summer and won the primary election back in August, beating out several other nominees after a chaotic Republican debate on PBS. Then a month later came the governor town hall, where for the first time, both Hobbs and Lake took the same stage separately to address their key issues. We're going to do um, some great things. We need a transformative leader right now, somebody who's not afraid to take big steps, not baby steps, because we've got big problems and big issues. 
But tensions grew between the two candidates over the traditional televised debate. Hobbs said she didn't want to battle it out on stage. You keep reminding the world that you're a coward and afraid to do a debate. Lake has repeatedly mentioned how she would not have certified Arizona's 2020 election results if she was governor at the time, questioning the election process and alluding to possible voter fraud. It's a continuous attack at her opponent, who is currently Secretary of State. For now, Lake continues to push supporters to vote in person on election day or use mail in voting, but to not drop off ballots in the drop boxes. There were major problems in our election. I believe there was major corruption in our election, and I'm seeing it again in 2022. August 2nd, 2022, Katie Hobbs advising our counties on how many ballots to print, and one hour into the elections in Pinal County, they ran out of Republican-only ballots. Diving into some of Lake's top priorities, she made it clear from day one that she will work to secure the southern border. On day one, we're going to start rolling out Arizona National Guard to stop people from coming across. And on day one, we're going to start finishing President Trump's wall. For voters, the Valley's soaring inflation rates, one of the highest in the country, is a major concern. I think we're already in a recession, and that's why my tax plan, we rolled it out, and we want to help people as soon as possible. We want to make sure that Arizonans get relief. We're going to send a half a billion dollars back to the people of Arizona. But potentially one of the biggest talkers in the country right now, especially in Arizona, is abortion access. Lake was a steadfast pro-life, but recently pivoted slightly during a town hall meeting. She believes families should have the option for abortion in cases of rape and incest, but added those cases are rare when it comes to overall abortion and acknowledged the confusion over the current state laws. I am running for chief executive. That means I follow the laws that are on the books. And so that's the law I stand. I'm personally pro-life. Expanding our water access, improving education, and tackling homelessness are all other key items the Republican candidate wants to address if elected into office. We want to get the homeless off the streets, get them help, and make our cities and parks and streets safe again. We requested a one-on-one -on -one camera interview with Carrie Lake in time for this taping, but we were denied that request. In Phoenix, Stephanie Bennett, Fox 10 News. Welcome back. One of two U.S. Senate seats in Arizona is up for grabs in this November's midterm, and it pits incumbent Democrat Mark Kelly against Republican newcomer Blake Masters. Fox 10's Linda Williams takes a closer look at both candidates. A 36-year-old entrepreneur who says he decided to run because he doesn't like the way things are going in Arizona or the country. Blake Masters says he's qualified on several levels to be Arizona's next senator. I've seen innovation. I've seen firsthand how the government uh, can get in the way and really just destroy things. Now it's something that we're experiencing every day under Joe Biden and Mark Kelly's so-called leadership. Masters has traveled Arizona speaking to supporters. He rallies with other Republicans on the ticket who also have former President Donald Trump's endorsement. <laughs> They've surrendered the border to the Mexican drug cartels. They gave up. What's the correct amount of illegal immigration? Zero. Zero. On abortion, the father of three says he is pro-life. During the primary, and it's what I'll tell you now, I always thought we needed to repeal Roe versus Wade. I'm glad that the Supreme Court did that. Send that issue back to the states. And I'll support Arizona whatever they decide. I've come out in favor of Arizona's 15-week law. I think that's where people in Arizona are. I think that's a reasonable, reasonable place to draw the line, right, regardless of my personal beliefs. Billing himself as Arizona's true MAGA candidate, Blake Masters is highly critical of the current Democrat Senator Mark Kelly. He says he hasn't done enough on Arizona's border and in other areas. Kelly pushes back, saying, in fact, he has gotten a lot done these past 21 months in Washington, D.C. Bipartisan infrastructure bill, CHIPS legislation, bringing tens of thousands of good paying jobs. We expanded veterans' health care, gun safety legislation, uh, postal reform. All of those things were done with Democrats and Republicans working together. It's how the place is supposed to work. We caught up with the 58-year-old senator before an event with veterans in Phoenix. A former Navy pilot and retired astronaut, Kelly won a special election to fill the remaining term of Arizona Senator John McCain in 2020. He agrees with his opponent, Masters, that the border with Mexico is a top challenge facing Arizonans. Kelly says new technology is planned for the border and it will help but in the meantime this is a crisis 
uh, and it has gotten worse, and it's the the numbers speak for themselves. Why That's you why I've been to go to fix this. Well, first of all, I'm willing to work across the aisle with Republicans to address this. I have legislation with Republican senators. Uh, to address the, the issue of a policy change that the, that the president was trying to make to prevent it. As for the abortion rights issue, Kelly says Masters' views have set Arizona women back. My daughter who lives here and my granddaughter who they live in Tucson uh, now has fewer rights than my mother or my grandmother did. And that's something my opponent wanted. I'm going to fight every day I'm in the United States Senate to get women back their constitutional rights. Also on the ballot for Arizona U.S. Senate, Mark Victor, a libertarian who has polled between 4 and 15 percent recently. Victor's message is live and let live on all issues. Linda Williams, Fox 10 News. Welcome back. There's a significant divide and contrast between the two candidates running for Arizona Attorney General. Abe Hamaday. The Republican is a newcomer to the political scene. Chris Mays is a Democrat who switched parties just a few years ago. Fox 10's Justin Lum spoke with both candidates. Abe Hamaday is endorsed by former President Donald Trump. He worked as a prosecutor for the Maricopa County Attorney's Office for about three years before being deployed to Saudi Arabia in 2020 as an Army Reserve Intelligence Officer. Chris Mays is an attorney who was the commissioner of the Arizona Corporation Commission for seven years. She's a former journalist for the Arizona Republic. Both Mays and Hamaday claim they have more legal experience for the role of AG. You have to see the victims. You have to go, and I put criminals behind bars. But besides that, you know, when you're actually a prosecutor, you're in court so often, you have to deal with the complexities of a jury and a judge and a defense attorney. There were times when our attorneys at the Corporation Commission that I supervised were cross-deputized as assistant attorney general, so technically I've already overseen assistant AGs. Abortion remains a controversial topic in Arizona. The 15-week abortion ban is in effect. Meanwhile, a judge has put a hold on a near-total abortion ban dating back to 1864. I will not prosecute a doctor, a pharmacist, a nurse a woman uh, for abortion care, period, when I'm attorney general. And that's because Arizona has an express right to privacy in our Constitution. I happen to be pro-life, and I'm not ashamed of it. And I do think there are some reasonable exceptions. And I think, you know, what I'm tasked to do as attorney general is to uphold the law and not put my personal beliefs in there. As for election integrity, Hominy says it's unfair to be called an election denier, despite saying the certified 2020 election was rigged. We have to make sure we regain the confidence in the. And as Attorney General, we have an election integrity unit, and I intend to beef that up with more attorneys so we can go after some, some of the fraud and bad, bad actors. Clearly, when it comes to hot button topics like abortion and elections, Hamade and Mays take stances that are the polar opposite. But they do both agree more must be done about the fentanyl crisis. The Biden administration needs to do a better job of modernizing and quickly modernizing our ports so that we can stop it before uh, that fentanyl gets into the state of Arizona. On day one, I want to work with the legislature and the governor to declare the cartels as terrorist organizations. And with that designation, there's actually enhanced sentencings on them. Whoever Arizonans ultimately decide to elect will be entrusted to take on the role of the state's chief legal officer. I'm Justin Lum. For Fox 10 News. Arizona could play a key role in which way Congress goes. Right now, Democrats control the U.S. Congress, but Republicans are very close to flipping it, and some of the Arizona races could affect that. All nine U.S. congressional seats in Arizona are on the ballot, but only seven of the seats have candidates from both parties running. Republican Debbie Lesko in District 8, uh, she is running unopposed. Republican Paul Gosar in District 9 is safe with only nominal write-in opposition. Democrats hold six of the nine seats in Arizona, and this year there are three seats that Republicans could flip, so it could completely turn. Let's begin with District 1. Republican incumbent David Schweikert going up against Democrat Jevin Hodge. The district includes portions of Paradise Valley, Scottsdale, and Cave Creek. Schweikert has served six terms in Congress. Hodge leads an Arizona Head Start program and lost a close race for Maricopa County Board of Supervisors in 2020. In Congressional District 2, this is one of the ones that could flip. This covers much of northern and eastern Arizona. Features Democrat Tom O'Halloran, who is seeking a fourth term in office, going up against Trump-endorsed Republican Eli Crane. 
O'Halloran has represented Arizona in Congress since 2017. Crane is a former Navy SEAL, reality show contestant who has never served in public office. Arizona District 3 covers areas southwest of Phoenix, including Levine, Maryvale, Glendale. Democratic incumbent Ruben Gallego appears to be safe here, facing off against Republican Jeffrey Zink. Gallego is a Marine, first elected to the House in 2014. Zink previously worked at a natural gas company and has never held public office. It's a heavily Democratic district. District 4 covers parts of Tempe Mesa Chandler. This pits incumbent Greg Stanton, a Democrat, against Republican Kelly Cooper. Now, Stanton served as mayor of Phoenix before being elected to Congress in 2018. Cooper is a Marine who has received an endorsement from former President Trump, and this is one of these districts that could potentially flip, although right now it's considered blue, a light blue. District 5 covers much of the Southeast Valley, including portions of Chandler, Gilbert, and parts of Pinal County. Republican incumbent Andy Biggs going up against Democrat Javier Ramos. Independent candidate Clint Smith is also running. Biggs has served in both the U.S. House and State Senate. Ramos previously served as Arizona's Assistant Attorney General. Smith is an attorney and a political activist. District 6 is a new district in southern Arizona. It covers five different counties previously held by Democrat Ann Kirkpatrick, but she's retiring. So now it's an open seat. Republican Juan Siscomani going up against Democrat Kristen Engel. Siscomani has been an advisor to Governor Doug Ducey. Engel is a former state lawmaker. Finally, U.S. District 7 covering much of Tucson. Democratic incumbent Raul Grijalva going up against Republican challenger Luis Pozzolo. Grijalva has served in Congress for nearly two decades. Pozzolo is a businessman who became a U.S. citizen 10 years ago after immigrating from Uruguay. By the way, this is a very heavily Democratic district considered safe for Grijalva. Welcome back. As we inch closer to the November election, recent poll numbers show a shift in the race for governor. The most recent Fox 10 poll from Insider Advantage shows Republican Carrie Lake widening her lead over Katie Hobbs by as much as 11% in this one poll. Earlier this week, I sat down with the chairman of Insider Advantage, Matt Towery, to find out what's behind Lake's recent surge. But boy, these gubernatorial races where the issues are more local and they often deal with crime or immigration um, and, and, or, or some issues around uh, the economy. what they call woke, wokeism, oh, okay. uh, yeah. that's moving the vote in these, wow. in these states left and right. What I was told is that there has been since this all this no debate issue that, yes. that came up, that there's been sort of a pivot in terms of, of the voting trends there in, in the polling that others are seeing. And so we've either caught this wave at its height, maybe it'll go down again, or we're, we've caught it as it as it's reaching its crescendo, or it, I guess it could build, but that's gonna be, that would be quite a stretch. So how accurate are these polls? Pollsters will admit with changing technology, it's gotten harder to reach people. Polls in the final weeks of the 2020 election we're further off the mark in the final count than in decades. In the end, though, the only poll that matters is your vote on Election Day. Don't forget, Fox 10 is your election headquarters on November 8th. Our coverage begins at 8 p.m. right here on Fox 10. We'll have the very first results at the top of the hour. That's going to do it for us for this Fox 10 You Decide election special.